Hello, bonjour Alberta. Did you know that at least 238,000 people speak Francais in Alberta? And those numbers just keep on growing? Oui, oui, c'est vrai, it's true. And thanks to Shaw TV Community Access Programming, we get to reach out to everyone to let you know all about special people, places, events and activities happening right here in this great province in both English and en français. That's right, mes amis. We begin the first part of our program in English and then we repeat it en français. So stay with us. Restez à l'écoute. Bienvenue chez nous, everyone. And welcome to the Hello Bonjour Alberta TV set. Today we thought that it might interest you to get to know your host. This year we're co-hosting with uh, Luigi La Barriere, who is Hello. from Montreal. Yes. And we're going to chat a little bit about uh, our backgrounds and what brought us to Alberta. Exactly. Well, thank you for receiving me and uh, having a chance to be part of a wonderful show, a bilingual show here in Calgary. Uh, it's a pleasure to uh, work with you. So are you from Montreal originally? Born and raised in Montreal, Hôpital Fleury and Quartier Ahansic. Uh, yeah, raised most of my life in Montreal. From uh, My parents are from uh, Haiti, so I have Haitian heritage that I carry with me, as you can see, I, and uh, yeah, both, both of them, the poutine and the Caribbean rice and griot is part of me all day long. <laughs> That's part of your menu. Eh? Yes, all, I'm non-stop. I love ah, poutine. <laughs> so is your family here in Calgary as well, or I'm where the are they? Only, I'm the only one of my family here in Calgary. Uh, I took a leap. Uh, last year decided to uh, go and discover further than Young Street, Toronto. <laughs> so first time in Calgary, yes. So how did you end up in Calgary all the way from Montreal? Well, I I'm going to tell you, it's a real funny story. I, wor I, I was working in, uh, in school board in Montreal and I was a basketball coach, uh, soccer coach, so on and so on, doing after school project. And then I had a radio show and one of my friends uh, took a um, Heavy equipment operator course. So, he, and uh, after that, the school uh, wanted to uh, recruit 30 individuals, Haitian or from Haitian descent, to take the course six months and go to Haiti, help out for the rebuilding of Haiti after the earthquake uh, five years yeah. ago, right now. Yeah. And from there, we never went to Haiti, none of the 30 people, and that's a whole different story. Uh, no news from the school, all the politicians involved at that point, but anyway, I stayed in Montreal, worked three years, snow removing, and doing radio and DJ on my off time, and with the commission, uh, Charbonneau, that's going on right now, it's kind of slow in construction or being an operator, so I stored everything, sold my, my furniture, and came down here in Calgary. Ah, yeah. and would you like to work again in the radio industry here, or what would you like to do here? Well, came, what are you doing here? In well, Calgary? I came with that profile as an operator, every okay. equipment operator. Um, it was kind of hard to get in, you know, in, into that, that, that field, so I got back into doing DJ and hosting event, and hopefully uh, get back uh, behind a mic for a radio station here in Calgary. I really love the city and enjoy uh, people's company, people I've met for the last uh, 10 months here, yeah. And what kind of radio show were you doing in Montreal? I was doing a... Musical or it, it music? Was, or? It was a morning show. I had three ah, different okay. shows. I did radio in, in Miami and in Montreal for a Haitian station on Saturdays. And my last show was uh, a morning show. Every Friday morning, hip-hop, R&B music, Haitian music, mu music from all around the world. And I was um, sharing the news and the traffic and having different guests. So it's kind of an ur urban morning show I had. It was a wonderful nice, concept. Nice. Yes, yes. And how about you? How long have you been in Calgary? I've been in Calgary for 30 years now. Wow. Yeah. And uh, I used to, I lived in uh, Quebec City. I was born and raised in Quebec City and lived in Ottawa, went to university in Ottawa 
and after university found a job uh, worked as a lawyer for a few years and then uh, I was teaching English and French to senior officials in the federal government oh, at that wonderful. time to make extra money because exactly. when you start out you don't make too much money yes. and uh, one of them said we have this new program in oil and gas we're looking for lawyers are you interested in uh, joining us and I said sure I was single back then and I thought it's a great opportunity learning experience for me and so I joined the federal government and ended up in Calgary you came to see the Cowboys I did and the oil yes and you loving it yes I even married one. Oh wow <laughs> not really a cowboy but <laughs> not really a cowboy. <laughs> Westerner for sure and how did, Westerner you get, for sure. how did you get involved with this uh, TV show here well um, my children when uh, when they first started out it took me a few years to discover the francophone school in Calgary because yes. there was only one back then so uh, but once I did then I met uh, the producer Suzanne de Corville Nicole yes, wonderful and person. worked uh, volunteered for many many years uh, off and on with Suzanne in different events and uh, that sort of thing and uh, we reconnected just a few years ago on this project on this project yes it's a, it's a wonderful project yeah. a bilingual TV show and when I tell people in Montreal about it they kind of is it possible how can you do that well it's 15 minutes English and 15 minutes French yes and the idea behind it was to try and introduce um, our the francophone um, community members to the anglophone community here in Calgary and also trying to find out why people moved to Calgary because very few people of our generation were born and raised in Calgary right. there are so many people who come from outside of Calgary so we wanted to find out well what brought you to Calgary and why haven't you gone back? Yeah, exactly. Everybody loves it here once they've moved and every, everybody stays. Every, most of the people I've met also, they come and they don't want to go back from wherever they're from. They like the, the greenery and they like downtown, they like the stampede and they like the unemployment ex possibilities here. So, yes. yes. And the friendliness of Calgarians. It's incredible. You know, people are very friendly here. I was, I w I'm going to tell you, Anne, the first thing that shocked me here when you talk about friendliness is when you get off a bus here and you get off by the back door and people are just yelling to the driver, thank you. And the, the driver answers back. I would never see something like that in Montreal. I know, I know. They, nobody has time to say thank you for driving me home. Yes. So yes, I really enjoy friendliness here in Calgary. It's very, very. So you've been here for how long now? I've been here since November. November and I went back for vacation in December and came back in January and ever since uh, I'm enjoying it. I do my little YouTube videos about where I am, what I'm doing, uh, traveling Edmonton, Sandry, Louisiana, Red Deer. I discovered a lot of stuff being a DJ also and hosting different event weddings and corporate events so yeah. I'm discovering. And how did you discover the francophone community here? Uh, you know all those websites, Facebook and chit chat in here. I had one or two friends that were telling me about the Haitian Association, and then from uh, that, okay. I leaped to another association and you know, met Suzanne. And now I realize there's a lot of French communities in the west of Canada as I'm going along and discovering the show and being involved in the show, also. Yes, and yeah. it's a it's a very multicultural francophone community right, here in also, Calgary. Yes. People come from all over the place and other provinces as well as other countries very multicultural it's great yeah and I noticed it's been going on for four four years now you the, the the TV show uh, three, I three think. Years? this is our fourth uh, our fifth season but over a period of uh, two and a half three years so we're starting um, we started this season with, uh, I think, show number 35 or 36. 36, 36. 36. Something like that. <laughs> so, yes. And we thought it'd be a really good idea to sort of have a co-host to uh, be able to um, 
get a different point of view exactly. and uh, interview people. Because yeah. I'm from, I have a different background, I have different references. I'm not only bilingual, I'm trilingual. Uh, I grew up in a Haitian uh, environment, family, so Creole, English, French, all at the same time. At one, two, three years old, four years old. So it was kind of a spaghetti at the beginning, but after a while I... <laughs> it sorted I, itself yeah, out. Yeah, so yeah, I enjoyed it. So, you know, and having you that's been here 30 years in the Western Canada and Mark, that's not too far from where we are, grew up. So I think we're a well-balanced team. I really yes, enjoyed... Yes, we'll be a really good team this year. Yes, yes. Really neat. So you've done an interview already? Yes, I did one with you. Yes. And we interviewed uh, the president of the Calgary Zoo. It was a wonderful interview and made me discover Calgary Zoo. And uh, I got to go and walk Sheldon. Yes, <laughs> you need to go walk Sheldon and exactly. you need to go to Zoo Light this year. Yes, yeah, Zoo Light, I guess. For sure. It. I will take some videos and put it on my YouTube. I'm a real YouTube guy. People that follows me knows about my YouTube channel. So yeah. So and you do have a nickname. Oh yes. you your your my artist radio name. show, your Host. artist name. <laughs> so tell us a bit about that. Well Soundproof came about uh, when I was in Florida and it was right a month before starting doing radio and I've been through so much in my life and I've seen so much and I've done so much and I didn't do enough sometimes but the, all the noise and traffic one thing clicked to my head going through all that in my life was soundproof I was really soundproof like you know I, I was protected of a lot of drama and stuff so yeah so that's how my name came about soundproof Ah, and you've been using that ever since. Ever since. I mean, I, I presented myself as soundproof to Abby Belafonte, Wyclef Jean, Justin Trudeau. Uh, my name is Soundproof, and people enjoy it, but for uh, for times being, it's Luigi Labaria. That's my government name, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> so I enjoy my name also, Luigi Labaria, but Soundproof is just uh, dear to me, close to me, the reason I selected that name. Yeah. So do Haitian name mean something special like a lot of people have uh, it it looks compared to uh, maybe some names like mine last name Boiteau yeah. doesn't really mean anything oh. you know but La Barriere you yes. have a picture in your mind already oh the last you know? name La Barriere yeah um, I did research on my name I'm gonna show you a historical fact is that Captain Morgan yeah. The rum captain, yeah, yeah, yeah. he really existed, and the pir uh, the pirates of the Caribbean movie was based on Captain Morgan. Now, alongside with him in the 1500, 1600, there was a Captain de la Barrière that came to Haiti because there's a, a pier in Haiti called the Poor Morgan, and. Captain Labaya was another one of his associate, the uh, pirate robbers, whatever you want to call them, and he landed in Haiti and had, you know, kids with a Haitian lady, I guess, or Indian lady at that time, and uh, that's where my name comes from, Labaya. Ah, okay. And, and Luigi, there was a young Italian Haitian kid where my mom grew up, so Luigi, he looked so cute. What's his name? Luigi he had blonde hair, blue eyes, a nice little Asian Italian guy. And my grandma loved that kid so much. So when my mom got a kid, when uh, my mom gave had birth, you? had me, so she called her mom and said, How should I come? So you, you know, I'm, I told you, you better call him Luigi, or else we're going to get mad here. <laughs> so yeah, that's ah. how I got my name, Luigi. I was going to say, that's very unusual. My middle name is Sander, and my grandma gave me that name again. It's uh, Col Curl the Colonel? Colonel, Colonel Sander. Yeah, she loved From that name. From Kentucky, yeah. Frank? Oh, she was Chicken. in love. When she got in America in 74, <laughs> she fell in love with that guy. So she said, Luigi and the, the Colonel, that's his name. <laughs> And that's so. Do you wow, you've got famous names. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and most of my Italian friends tell me after a while, they say, You look like a Luigi. I don't know what it is about you, but you're. Yes, you look after like a, a while, Luigi. we get accustomed to calling and, you Luigi. Yeah, exactly. Or soundproof, force the colonel, whatever you want. So, <laughs> Luigi is going to be great to co host this year with you. Well, I'm happy to be here. Thank you for uh, doing this uh, today so people get to know us a little bit uh, better. And to everyone, please stay tuned. We continue en français. En français.